Hi, I'm Heather. My husband Tom, Mr. Lazy R, is working and has appointments today, so I'll be doing this by myself. Bear with me because I have to be the camera person as well as doing the demonstration because my photographer daughter Christy is sitting there doing her own work and doesn't have time to help her mom. So let's get started. I wanted to make a macaron recipe. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's the French macaron, macaron not a macaroon, like the clumpy ball of um, coconut, shredded coconut and egg white. It's the French macaron that is too little lightweight, almond and egg white cookies, like meringue discs, and then you fill them with something, like a sandwich cookie. I was looking at different recipes. I decided to try um, King Arthur Flowers recipe, but I like to have weights instead of volume measures. So I looked at all the packages and put in the weights. Um, I am just going with my three egg whites that my husband had left over from his eggnog recipe yesterday. And those are about 96 to 97 grams. I have my recipe written down over here. The first step is one and a half cups almond flour and a cup of powdered sugar processed in the food processor for 20 seconds. So I'm gonna put that on my scale. I have translated that to 168 grams of almond flour and 120 grams of powdered sugar. Ooh, 128, 126, 120. Okay, I need to process this for about 20 seconds. It's not really mixing up. Hmm, the almond flour seems to be kind of stuck at the bottom. If you stick your hands in here, be careful. It's got a very sharp blade. It's not mixing it. That's pointless. I think the direction should say stir it together. Fluff with a fork or something like that. This will be my first time making macarons. I've never made them before. So this turns out. Not a great start. Oh, I didn't put the blade back in. supposed to sift that to remove any large chunks. Ooh, that's nice and silky soft. Okay, so I'll have that set aside. I've had my egg whites sitting in my mixer bowl for a while. Oh yeah, they're not too cold. They're mm, maybe a little bit cooler than room temperature, but they're not refrigerator cold or anything. So that's good. The next step is to separate the eggs, which I don't need to do because I have the three whites left over from my husband's recipe. And it says to put in a pinch of salt and a pinch of cream of tartar. So a pinch of salt. It's a pinch of sixteenth 
teaspoon. That's not a pinch. And it says not to stir it yet. Three tablespoons and a teaspoon of water and 120 grams of granulated sugar. Combine the water and granulated sugar in a small saucepan. Stir over medium heat until the sugar dissolves, then bring to a rapid boil. It's almost dissolved, not quite. Oh yeah, it's getting almost clear. I can still see some chunks. Oh, it's almost completely clear now. Scrape down the sides. I could put a lid on it to help steam the sugar down the sides. But the recipe doesn't tell me I need to bother with that. As soon as it comes to a rapid boil, I wait two minutes and then take it off the heat. Ooh, you can, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but you can see it's starting to um, take shapes uh, changing as uh, different parts of it heat up. I'm feeling sealing the first tiny bubbles like carbonation size. So it's a light bo boil and my timer is just starting and it's an actual full-on boil now. So I think that'll be good. Do it about when the timer goes off. I'll take it off the heat. And at this point you don't touch it, you don't stir it. You just wait patiently. Since I don't have a thermometer, a candy thermometer, I'm going to just take this off the heat um, at the two minute mark and hope that it's about the right temperature. I used to have a candy thermometer, but I think it broke. Okay, three, two, one. Off the heat, no stirring. It says take off the heat, immediately start whipping the egg mixture. Okay, it doesn't look too bad. It's supposed to have a soft, um, what do they call it? A curved peak. Then take your syrup while whisking for the syrup. Supposed to beat it until it's got a smooth, glossy, soft peak. It's very runny. That's a soft peak. It's a smooth, glossy, soft peak. Now the bowl is still freaking hot. In the other recipe, I think it said to do it until the bowl doesn't feel hot anymore. I'd say that's a soft peak. Fold in the almond flour mixture. Done. Get a view of that. Lifting and flipping it over. Not like trying to beat it. It's rather fluffy and it's kind of holding its shape. It's almost like a really bizarrely wet uh, bread dough. You can see right now it's clumpy. It's not really forming a ribbon. It's staying in its shape. So I'm gonna stir it a little more. Stir to thin it out until the batter runs in ribbons. Almost there. One, thousand two, one thousand three, one thousand four, one thousand five, seven, eight, and nine, and ten, and eleven, and twelve. That's good, right there. I'll try one with a tablespoon and see how it works. Mm. 
broken tablespoon. Parchment's a little rounded up there. Crease in it. Keep it nice and flat. Okay, so maybe I won't fill it up quite all the way. Or maybe I'll get a different scoop. Since these won't rise in the oven, you're supposed to be able to put them close together, but you have to account for their spreading before they go in. I'm going to try this. I've got a teaspoon measure and a half teaspoon measure. I'm scooping with the teaspoon measure. And I'm scraping it out with a half teaspoon measure. They say a teaspoon size dollop. That would be a very tiny cookie. That's not big enough. That's just silly. Total 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Perfect. So I get 42. These need to set aside for maybe up to two hours to dry until. You can touch them and pull your finger away clean. While the macarons are sitting at room temperature to sort of dry, I'm going to prepare the filling, a fresh strawberry frosting filling. I've got a cup of strawberries. I'm just gonna roughly chop them into the food processor. Cut out any little bad spots to go in the compost bowl. I got this recipe for real strawberry frosting from All Recipes. I'll put a link to it and to the King Arthur recipe for the macarons in the description below. Let's see, it says puree the strawberries. The recipe says do it in a blender, but I figure I should do it in what I already am using. The bowl is too big for this, such a small amount of berries. It's not really pureeing very well. I might have to get my ninja out. made this frosting recipe once before. It was a, a long time ago, like a year and a half ago maybe? I'm not sure. Um, I think I might have used more strawberries than they called for last time.
Ooh, yeah. You probably can't see it there. But it's nice and liquidy. What I suspect the recipe maybe means is that you need a cup of the puree. So I'm going to measure out the puree. And there's not even quite three quarters of a cup. So I'm going to put some more strawberries in there. compost bowl is off to the right there. I need to mix the old with the new. So enough volume. <clears throat> I'm just using the pro extraction button on the Ninja mixer. is just over a cup of strawberry puree. Now I heat it on medium. Look at how bright pink that is. Can you see that? You're supposed to heat this on medium and reduce it by at least half more if you want a stronger flavor and um, should take about 20 minutes of boiling simmering it's still cold right now I'm supposed to stir it frequently supposed to test when your finger can come away clean then it's time to bake so I'm going to preheat the oven 275 let that preheat this strawberry um, reduction is needing almost constant stirring now to keep it from sticking to the bottom you might be able to see the way it Leaves a space how, how thick it's getting. I'm trying to reduce this down to about a half cup. Take it off the heat, and I need to cool this really fast because I'm in a hurry. Okay, I'm going to scrape that into the plastic container so I can cool it off more quickly. Two ice packs, one here. One below it and one above it. I'll go set that somewhere else. Time to flip the macarons. Ooh, they already look pretty. So I'm moving the back to the front and the front to the back. I'm spinning them. Ooh, those are already kind of brown. Those aren't supposed to be that brown on the top. I think this too high. These ones are good. I'm not sure they're going to need to bake much longer. Those ones might not need, need to bake any longer. The macarons are flipped and back in the oven. The strawberry puree is cooling. I've had my butter out to soften and it is soft now. So I'm going to start mixing up the buttercream. One cup of butter, which is two sticks. I like to save these wrappers for greasing pans later. And this is unsalted butter. Beat the butter into light and fluffy first. 
looks light and fluffy to me. Now, beat in a cup of powdered sugar. I want to weigh it. A quarter cup of powdered sugar is 30 grams, so 120 grams per cup. So I need 120 grams. I'm going to need three and a half cups total, but you put in a little at a time. Oops. Ooh, 120. There we go. You're supposed to sift it to get rid of any lumps. Helps out if you get the crusty sugar off from before. I don't think it's going to have any lumps. I don't think this stuff is really necessary. Yeah, there's not a single lump. This is a half teaspoon measure, and I need, I'll double check, one teaspoon vanilla. So that's half. Oops. Oh, it's cold. Yeah, but... it's okay. It says to put in two tablespoons, but I'm just going to eyeball it. Mix just until blended and then repeat with the sh uh, powdered sugar, a cup of powdered sugar, two tablespoons puree two more times. Zero that out. I need another 120 grams of powdered sugar. I didn't sift it. Oh well. I think I'm done with the sifter. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be a problem. I don't think I sifted it last time either. Have it on low so the powdered sugar doesn't get flying off everywhere. until blended. Just checking how thick it is. It's kind of it's kind of thin. Can we see it? Huh? Can we see it? So a half cup is going to be 60 grams.
the exact amount of powdered sugar you need is going to vary greatly depending on how much you have concentrated your strawberries. It seems a little too soft. <laughs> Tastes really good though. Mm. Okay. I'm going to put a half cup in at a time. So another 60 grams. Mm. Well, let's try 100 grams. Here we go, 100 grams. That's a nice consistency. It'll hold its shape a little bit. I'm going to carefully take these off so they can cool faster. I'm supposed to leave them in a pan until it's completely cool, but I'm really in a rush. Even though they are maybe slightly overdone because they're brown, they don't taste overdone. They taste really good. Mm. Really nice texture, crispy on the outside, mm. and chewy on the inside. It's supposed to be until they completely cool and use a um, very thin spatula to help take them off. Yeah, they're going to be, most of them are probably going to be too delicate to remove because they're too warm. Oh, that one's downright hot. So these need to cool a little. These ones are kind of tiny though. Maybe I'll try some of these. Ooh, that's hot. <laughs> In the center, my finger is right underneath. It's kind of hot where you don't realize how hot it is until your fingers put on it too long. Thank you. Yeah. I'm afraid that if I put it, actually, like try to chill them to speed everything up, that there's going to be condensation that's going to make them gooey, not nice and crispy. I'm just flipping them upside down so they can dry out while they cool. The bottom is a little on the moist side. This is going surprisingly well, considering that I'm doing this a little too soon. We're going out, so that's why I'm in such a hurry. This one's giving me the finger. I have a piping bag, a reusable piping bag, and the uh, coupling and uh, just a simple round frosting tip. You put the base of the coupling inside your frosting bag out to the tip. Put your frosting tip on and screw on the last piece. Scooping the frosting. Okay. Start with that amount. I'm going to be taking these cookies out and they haven't really had the proper amount of time to completely cool off. So I'm just gonna pipe and test one cookie for the video, and then I'm gonna pack it uh, up the frosting and cookies separately and take them with us to a cookout and 
um, then I can pipe them when I get there. First, I'm, I fold over my bag and I give it a twist. So I just pipe frosting on. And put the top on the cookie. Voila. And I'll give it a little taste. I think the frosting would do better if it were refrigerated. So we'll pack it with a couple of the ice packs to take it with us. It's very delicious though. Thanks for watching.